video deals with a death that occurred on the PCT that I was witness to. It happened on Friday, right about noon, about mile 33. Um, if you don't want to know what happened, you go ahead and change the channel now, or back off, whatever you want to do. But no, nothing, no graphic video or nothing, it's just me describing what happened. So, you got five seconds to decide if you want to watch, can you watch it or not? <clears throat> okay, um, Friday afternoon, I was ascending out of Kibitz Creek, I believe it is, and it was about mile 33, it was a long ascent, very, very windy day, a lot of gusty winds, and so at mile 33, I saw a couple gentlemen ahead of me hiking, about 150 yards, they rounded a corner, and then I heard shouting, and so I rushed up the trail as quick as I could to see what was going on. And I saw two gentlemen, the older gentleman was collapsed laying in the trail. And the younger gentleman was performing CPR, you know, try, checking his tongue, seeing how he was doing, see if he could breathe. Uh, they were both Korean, so communication was difficult. The older gentleman, he was not communicating. He was still breathing when I got there. And his friend was performing CPR. I tried calling 911 on my phone. I did not have coverage. He did on his, Chan, that's the younger gentleman. He did have coverage, so I got a hold of 911. And um, got them directed to where, basically where we were at. I gave them max, told them what the nearest trailhead was, which was Kibitz Creek. So they sent rescue units there. And they also sent the sheriff's helicopter out to air spot us so they knew I would get a really good fix on where we were. They it was probably about 15 minutes before the helicopter got there and 20 before the other team reached Kibitz Creek. And the gentleman had passed long before that. It was probably within five minutes, maybe 10 minutes at the most, he was dead. So I was calm. Well, I was surprisingly calm. Just, just went into that mode, I guess. I was speaking with 911, got everything, got everybody coordinated where they needed to be. When rescue, or, or the 911 dispatch told me that rescue would reach Kibbutz Creek, he asked me to go down the trail to meet them. So I told Chan, I guess I had the younger gentleman, I told him I was going down there to meet them. To Walked back up. Um, I got about halfway back down the trail and met with 911, met with the emergency crew, directed them back up there, following back up there to the trailhead to where we were at, to the trail where the gentleman was lying. And they pronounced him as you know, said he was passed long before that. Um, so I stuck around a couple other hikers had come through they just um, so I stayed there until they made sure everything was made sure he was you know as well as could be expected I gave him a brief hug told him how sorry I was and I headed out so nothing more I could do so about half a mile in it hit me so I broke down about 30 seconds and kind of lost it and I you know, gather myself back together and started hiking on. And a gentleman caught up with me and I told him what had just happened. He, he had just passed by the situation because I guess he was, they were there for like, an, for quite for a while yet before they could get airlifted out, I believe. So he hiked with me for about a mile until I come across the camp where a friend of mine was. So I got there, I just collapsed. And they, they knew what happened. So I just collapsed there and pitched tent with those guys. It was like four or five people there, I think. I just pitched, pitched tent there with them. And <clears throat> that was a rough night's sleep. I didn't get maybe maybe a half hour at the most. And Saturday, went into uh, Mount Laguna. And I was going to stay then, I'm staying there that night. Because I found out that Chan was coming back on trail Sunday, 
it was coming up to Mount Laguna. So I wasn't sure if I wanted to see him again or not. I don't know how that sounds, but it was the right thing to do because it kind of put a little bit of a little bit of closure on everything. Um, so yeah, Friday night, Saturday night were tough sleeping nights. Um, and seeing Chan Sunday, like I said, it kind of put a little bit of closure on stuff. And it's still, still there, still there, but I'm getting through it. Chan's doing fine from what I can tell. I've, I've come across him a couple times since then. He seems to be doing fine. Um, so the trail may separate us, and when he goes back to Korea, he'll be separated. Probably never see each other again, but we'll always have that connection. Um, so, anybody who's thinking that the Pacific Crest Trail is a nature walk, it's not. Things have happened, things can happen, things will happen. You just have to be prepared to prepared for it and know, know something like that can happen. I wasn't really prepared for day three having something like this happen, but I'm just glad I was there and they weren't up there by themselves because it could have been another, probably another half hour before someone come through there, I believe. So don't go in, don't think you're going to go on the Pacific Crest Trail for a nature hike because it's not. So, okay.